Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and Octane 2019 offers a useful rounded edge shader. And you can use this both in Moto Shader Tree and in the nodal uh, shading interface within the schematic that a lot of Octane users like to use instead of just the uh, Moto Shader Tree. And I'll show you how it works in both. So here we have a case fan, it's just a standard computer case fan. And this is a CAD file uh, that I was taken from grabcad.com. So if you haven't been to GrabCAD, uh, there's all kinds of uh, great CAD files there. And I should actually credit the person who made this. His name is Vladimir Tyrkin. So thank you, Vladimir, for this uh, nice computer case fan that I'm using in this video that you will never see. Anyway, um, I can't say that because I actually did grab something from GrabCAD once and then I didn't credit it. And then the guy who made it emailed me and said, hey man, you didn't credit me. So <laughs> I felt terrible. So I've been crediting these. Uh, from now on. Anyway, let's get to the rounded edge shading, right? So you can see it looks pretty nice, but it has these super hard edges, right? And those suck. Everybody who has to do product rendering or render out CAD files knows these hard edges suck. We have to deal with them. Um, you know, rounded edge shading using ray tracing to find uh, the edges and do this sort of um, uh, sh shader algorithm that creates a rounded edge versus actually beveling the geometry edge beveling is so much better because edge beveling a uh, complex shape like this would really pretty much suck so it's good that octane has this and it works now for whatever reason it took octane a really long time or otoy a really long time to get this to work but it does work quite well now so let's just uh select the use the little eyedropper here to select that um, shader in the shading tree you'll notice i do not have an octane uh, override on this i'm just going to use the moto properties and here we have rounded edge width just like you would if it was a moto um uh, material and then I'll type in a really small value because uh, this is a case fan. So something really small, like a fraction of a millimeter, like 0.02, uh, you know, two tenths of a millimeter. And there we go. You can see it right there. In fact, it looks, I mean, it just is, it makes all the difference in the world, quite frankly. If you see here in this um, area right here, and you have this nice little sheen and where the light is catching that rounded edge on the edges of uh, the bolt here and, and around the circle. It just looks way better. In fact, if I turn this off, why don't I just do actually like a, uh, maybe like a little render region so you can see what it looks like with the back off. You know, it just, it's all the difference in the world, right? All these nasty hard edges here. You don't see that nice gleam on the inside there that you did with it on. And uh, it's just a much nicer looking image. So it's really great that this is working now. And it's, it's pretty accurate. It actually, I couldn't, you know, you could probably get it to break in some circumstances, but for the most part, it works quite well. And uh, it renders really fast and you can use it right here in the Moto uh, properties. Uh, I'll show you how you set it up in Octane in just one second. Let's just take a look at one other feature. So I've got another object in here. It's just this blue block. And oftentimes you'll have um, intercepting, intersecting objects. And it's nice to be able to have intersecting objects and have a nice blended um, sort of a edge rounding between them without having to do that via modeling, via Boolean operations and edge beveling. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the rest of the fan. I'm gonna duplicate this block, duplicate. And block two, I'm going to move over and I'm going to uh, make it like this. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to give it a new name, uh, red plastic. And we'll make it red. And we'll just see what we can do here by intersecting these two. So they're not intersected. So if I intersect uh, th these two now like this, and now they're intersecting, and I sort of push in here. And let's select the uh, red material first. I'm actually going to turn down the roughness a little bit. It's a little too rough. And look down here at rounded edge width. If I, let's say, I can make it, you know, one full millimeter. And you can see it rounding right there. In fact, I can make this probably a little bit smaller because we're pushed in quite a bit. And then I can do the same thing. Um, now you see that there's no actual, if I move the blue this way, you'll see that that little bevel, that little rounding goes with it, right? So it's just, you know, the ray trace here is seen where the geometry intersects and it's at this 90 degree angle and it uh, creates, um, you know, edge rounding in between. And I can put it on both materials. So I can also put it on the blue one here. We'll just do whatever I put it at, uh, oh, 05 maybe. And you can see the blue is doing it as well. I can't remember what I put the red at. Yeah, 05, 05. So they both have edge rounding on them and, you know, it's nicely intersected. Now I can actually turn that off with this round safe round same surface only. So if I if I've got the red uh, plastic here and I click round same surface only, I'm going to lose that on the red. So it's not going to um, do a rounding 
shader on intersections uh, where it's intersecting another surface. Now it will do it on its on the edges that aren't intersecting it. So the 90 degree edges are still rounded, just not on the intersection. I could turn that off on blue as well. So let me grab the uh, blue one here, turn off round shape surface only. And again, there's no rounding going on there. So if you don't want that to happen, you could turn that off while all these edges here you'll see are still rounded. So it looks pretty good. So what if you want to do edge rounding within the schematic using the sort of you know, schematic, uh, you know, nodal based octane shading a lot of us like to use. I can do that as well. Turn off my blocks here and turn my fan back on. And if we take a look at the fan blades, uh, there's a couple places in here that could use some edge rounding. One, the top of the blades don't have it. And also down here, you could use some edge rounding right there on it, you know, sort of intersecting itself. And so, yeah, you just do it like you would normally would. You go over to shading and I would uh, have my blades material here and I would do an octane override. And you can see um, that I've got an octane override there now. And if I, I'm just gonna turn this uh, side over here into a schematic and take a look. And down here, we've got a slot for edge rounding. So you just select that and do new rounded edges right here. Boom, and we've got a rounded edges node. You'll notice it has some properties that we can use. Um, Mode, fast, accurate, and then accurate for convex and accurate for concave. Now I haven't actually gotten these two to make a noticeable difference, but I may not have found the right situation. But I think you just set it to accurate and you're gonna be good. And again, let's set the width to like, uh, you know, two tenths of a millimeter. And boom, we've got both uh, intersections right here and on the top. Let me find a little bit better angle here. Whoops, not quite there, but just gonna push in a little bit. Yeah, so we can see Nice rounding on the top and on the edges there. And again, it has some, um, let me just go back to the schematic. You'll see it's got this consider other objects. Let me just sort of shove this over here. Consider other objects. That's the same thing as round save surface only. So you can turn that on or off and it will, um, you know, either blend into an intersecting object or not, which is fine. Roundness is another parameter you don't actually have in samples if you just use the modal material. So I can increase samples and theoretically it'll look a little better, like especially on these corners sometimes if you increase samples, um, you get a little bit you know, smoother, nicer look on that. But you know, I, I messed around with it a little bit in going anywhere from eight to 64, and I really didn't see a huge difference. Roundness is a big difference. So I can put this to zero and it really looks like just a flat, like sort of a chamfer bevel. Uh, we could try 0.5 here and you can see it's sort of you know, rounding a little more and then we get the full like rounding effect at one. So that could be useful in some cases as well. Um, and that actually will come with the octane override. So if I look at my uh, black material here that had the case material, which already has some edge rounding on it, if I add an octane override to that, it'll actually create that node for me. So, so really great job by Paul Kinane, who is uh, doing the Moto plugin for Octane. Uh, he really he really does a great job with the Moto plugin, and he really gets in there and tries to make everything work with these Moto materials. So you don't ever have to go to the schematic if you don't want to. But anyway, so there we go. That's uh, rounded edges for Octane and Octane 2019. Praise. Cthulhu or whoever it was they had to sacrifice to to make this finally work because it was getting, you know, year after year after year, it just wasn't happening. And I would go in and use Moto or I'd use V-Ray uh, v -ray for Moto just to get rounded edges. And now that we have that in Octane, and they're actually quite accurate and um, don't break too easily, uh, they're really usable and they're great and you'll use it on every single product rendering to some degree. Yum, yum.